one of the greatest acts of historical vandalism. They blew up the bridges over the Danube River. They interfered with commerce of the entire Danube River Basin. This was an act of real, again, despicable uh, vandalism on the part of the Clinton administration. Again, maybe more gore than Clinton, but still uh, the buck stops somewhere, stops with Clinton. Um, Bernie was a uh, leading guy in that. Right? So uh, he's uh, somebody who can't be trusted. He's, he's a border guard. And what you get out of this, uh, this essay, you can see this on my uh, website, right? Uh, the briefing for Wednesday, October 21st. Uh, awareness is growing of the treachery of the man called by anti-war people in Vermont. He's called Bernie the Bomber. Since 1999, he's been Bernie the Bomber. He is a humanitarian bomber. He would mean wider wars if he gets to the White House. Uh, he's a sheepdog, a stalking horse, a flank guard. Uh, and he's got this amazing, I think, quite obsolete idea that the social democratic societies of Scandinavia, the Swedish welfare state, the Danish welfare state, if we can call it that, that these are somehow exemplary and uh, and ought to be uh, imitated. My, my uh, the statistics I've been able to fi find online is that the the abject poverty rate in Denmark is about thirteen and a half percent, and the U.S. is one or two points higher. This is not anything to uh, to write home about, right? And of course, there's there is this question of uh, a, a virtually totalitarian bureaucracy. If they don't like your political opinions, there is a danger that your children will be taken away. That is not. Uh, not made up, right? I knew a very well-known Swedish lawyer, Lennart Hane, H-A-N-E, who uh, his specialty as a lawyer was to try to help people to get their own children back after they've been taken away by social workers because of the political opinions of the parents. That is uh, heavy, heavy stuff. Now, the, the, the thing about Bernie also, he's supposed to be a socialist. He says he's a democratic socialist. Now, let's put that back into context, because to some people, that seems like a change. Some of them might say, oh, it's refreshing after all this stuff. But um, you got to look back into this, right? The kind of socialism that he's talking about is the Socialist Party of the United States. And that is the old Norman Thomas uh, Princeton uh, socialists, uh, uh, the social, de the, the socialist uh, party of the United States, uh, was long known as the state department socialists. These were operatives, right? And, and they, they share a kind of a common matrix with the neocons. In other words, if you're looking at socialists and social Democrats, right-wing socialists and social Democrats in the twenties, then into the thirties, into the forties and fifties, you're going to see that the sources of the neocons are not so different, really, from the sources of the uh, of somebody like Bernie, who calls himself a democratic socialist, right? And in particular, we're talking about something called YPSL, Young People's Socialist League, a really smelly organization, which we'll discuss in the next segment. Back in a minute. The final segment of this week's edition of World Crisis Radio, Webster Tarp here in Washington, D.C., one last reminder, and that is uh, if you're in Rome, if you're in uh, central Italy or anywhere on that uh, epic uh, peninsula, stop by Rome on Monday, the 26th of October. The conference is no to war and no to NATO. And that's going to be at the Cavour Conference Center, Centro Convegni Cavour, Via Cavour. 50A, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on October 26th, and then on uh, October 31st to November 1st, the Querdenken Conference at Friedberg, Friedberg, Germany, near Frankfurt. Uh, look that up uh, under Querdenken Congress, Quer uh, uh, hyphen Denken hyphen Congress. De. So I look forward to seeing friends. We will organize uh, some kind of a, uh, a gathering, uh, some kind of a reception or something for the uh, various uh, people from the tax Wall Street Party. Now, let's just look at 
when Bernie says democratic socialist, how do you get to be a democratic socialist? Well, the Socialist Party of Norman Thomas shrank very fast after the 1920s. Uh, and of course, it was always run by this rich guy from Princeton. So this is already quite problematic. But it had certain radical elements in the 1920s. But those were then thrown overboard. And in particular, uh, the youth branch of this. Now, this went through various uh, evolutions, but it's called YPSL, Y-P-S-L, YPSL, Young People's Socialist League. Now, who were they? Those guys were the mushheads of earlier decades, right? This was not class struggle. This was not uh, militant, you know, pro-labor, strike support, cross-union caucus, bringing in the unemployed. No, 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 no. This was practically something you could put on your college application. In other words, it was closely linked to SANE, S-A-N-E, uh, which was the SANE nuclear policy, right? It was the anti nuclear weapons uh, organization, which was quite large in the 50s, 60s, right? Sane. So there was a symbiosis of those those two groups. Um, you also have to look at what happened, uh, you know, with this question of the, the Soviet Union and communism. And basically it was that the Socialist Party and YPSL were strongly anti-Soviet, anti-communist by the time we get into the into the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, right? They're very, very much on an anti-Moscow, anti-communist party line, right? So, and this m means that they're functioning as essentially as a border guard for the Democratic Party vis-a-vis -vis these uh, so-called Marxists, if, they, if that's what they were. Um, and you can see that, therefore, this, this vocation of being a border guard for the uh, for the Democratic Party is is what a lot of these so-called socialist groups have been doing now, uh, once again for many decades. One of the people you got to be aware of in this thing is a guy called Schachtman, Max Schachtman, the Schachtmanites, and this guy was a Trotskyist. He was working with Leon Trotsky, and then along comes the Hitler-Stalin Pact, right? The Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact, when a lot of people said, "Oh, I can't be a part of this anymore." Right? Look. Stalin is making a deal with Hitler, and of course this was uh, very disturbing for many reasons, uh, but these people, they drew certain lessons of their own, right? And so it's James Burnham, who later on became uh, a reactionary. He became part of the William Buckley circle, um, Burnham, writing, you know, National Review, this stuff, and then this guy Max Schachtman, and eventually they... Um, joined the Socialist Party in the 1950s, so it means that young people in those families would have had a chance of going into YPSL, Young People's Socialist League. So Bernie was a member of the Young People's Socialist League. That is a very right-wing, very petty bourgeois, very much modern mushhead uh, version of this entire thing. So you're looking at, uh, again, the, 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 the matrix for the neocons is not so different. In other words, you could have had somebody among the Schachtmanites. One of them would, be, would stay uh, nominally a socialist, and the other was, you know, the Crystals and the Podoretzes and so forth. They would, uh, or they had that ilk, they would fly off and become, uh, you know, more and more reactionary as, as time went by. Um, and that's... That's what that's what Bernie comes from. There was another thing called SEDUSA, Social Democrats USA, S D U S A, SEDUSA, and that also would they, those guys could call themselves also Democratic uh, Socialists. So um, you got people like uh, Muravchik, uh, Joshua Muravchik, uh, and others right, who have, have evolved way way to the right. Uh, Crystal, you know, that family, a uh, lot of neocons uh, coming from this general ambient. So social uh, being being a democratic socialist, not uh, a good thing. And therefore, we would say kudos to uh, Bruce Dixon at the Black Agenda Report. Kudos to uh, uh, Counterpunch magazine for uh, a very uh, significant, sustained uh, effort. But he is a, Bernie is a sheepdog. And look, after you saw that handshake, after you saw that symbiosis, that convergence, right, that 
um, you know, one hand washes the other that we saw in that debate. Don't say that you weren't warned. Don't say that you were fooled uh, and it's not your own fault. Right? People who are duped by Bernie at this point are duped because they want to be. And the stuff that we're getting from Bernie, right, that we have to have a popular revolution with millions of people in the streets for what? We're going to have a popular revolution for campaign finance reform? This is crazy. People need debt relief on the student loan front. They need to be protected against foreclosures. They need a living wage. They need a union. We got to have a 15% protective tariff. Above all, a 1% Wall Street sales tax to finance the federal budget and the really big one, seizing control in whole or in part or increasingly the Federal Reserve System, 0% 100-year credit to create 30 million new jobs through a program to comprehensively rebuild U.S. infrastructure. Um, uh, 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 perhaps a, a lighter note, little Rand Paul is going through this uh, slow motion collapse. Uh, we're looking forward for that to, uh, to terminate, right? We've, we've been watching it with a benevolent interest, but now it's time for it to, uh, to cease. Now, the other one is Trump, the wrecking ball, uh, Donald Sampson Trump pulling down the temple of the Philistines on the heads of the Philistines, uh, attacking the uh, civic myth, right? The oligarchical consensus that says that the 9-11 story is somehow uh, untouchable and the absurd contention by Jeb Bush, my brother kept us safe. Well, he didn't. <laughs> Look at there with all these 3,000 people. Some way or other, he didn't. I, I don't believe the official version. As you know, you should look at 9-11 synthetic terror made in USA, the fifth edition, if you please. We've even got a couple of things coming out on it, right? We've got this thing called Operation Fertile Rice, which was uh, Osama bin Laden attacking a drill. It was a, uh, Osama bin Laden attacking New York with a drone about a month before 9-11. We've also got this idea that Russia may have satellite photos, which would tend to undermine the U.S. story. But let me just get to this. The problem with, uh, with Bush, Jeb Bush, I, uh, or George Bush, George W. Bush, I don't believe that George W. Bush was the planner or the kingpin or the master of 9-11. It's absurd. He's a moron. He can't be. He's told to follow orders, keep his head down, do what he's told, right? That's, that's the story. But when in the beginning of August you get a piece of paper that says Obama determined, uh, sorry, Osama bin Laden determined to strike in the United States, then what can you do? Well, you go back and look at what even somebody like Clinton did in late 1999 when there was this millennial, millennium bomb threat. You organize a task force, set up agents in the process, you put out alerts, you mobilize, you slap on extra combat air patrols over the cities, you do all that. Bush, the younger, did nothing. So it's malfeasance and nonfeasance, a bubble nonfeasance, that we refuse to uh, condemn George Bush, the younger. Check the article by Benjamin DeMott in, uh, in Harper's Magazine in 2004. You can find all of that in the daily briefing displayed on tarpley.net, tarpley.net, and hope to see some in Rome on Monday, the 26th. Thank you so much. See you next